de-influence you today, so I'm so happy you clicked on this video. Now, every time I do these videos, whether I talk about products that didn't work for me, products I hate, or I'm just like de-influencing in general, my comments are normally flooded with people that take it pretty personal. <laughs> And I don't mean it that way. That's why in these videos, I often explain why they didn't work for me and who the product might work for. It's just like a guidance on like what you're purchasing and where not to waste your money. It's not for people to get upset that I don't like a product that they love because the great thing about the world is we're all different. Y'all have different needs and wants. So products may work differently on each of us. Anyways, we're gonna jump in. Today's video is de-influencing. I got a bunch of specifically beauty products. Honestly, TikTok sold me on most of these beauty products and they did not work for me. So I'm gonna explain explain what they are and why they didn't work. And I'll even tell you why they might work for you. Subscribe to my channel before you leave. Subscribe. Let's go ahead and jump right in. I'm gonna start with one of the biggest like bust that I've like experienced in makeup in a long time and I'm so bummed about it. So these are the L'Oreal Infallible Blushes. I bought this one, I believe I picked it up at Target, potentially with Erin when we did our Target haul. If you guys haven't seen that video, it's on my channel. We did like a self-care haul. And I finally saw these. I saw them on TikTok. Told you the TikTok girlies, they get me. Y'all may think I get you. Well, the TikTok girlies are getting me. By the way, if you don't follow me on TikTok, I will put my username right here. I would love to have you over there because I upload there almost every day and we talk about things, okay? So this is the Infallible Blush and I was so excited to try these because the Infallible products have really worked out for me, like the foundation powder. The bronzers have been iffy, but I have kind of found a shade in them that I have been enjoying. So when the blushes came out, I was like, woo, it's time to fall in love. But guess what? I never say, but this product is too pigmented. Like, when do you hear me say a blush is too pigmented? Now I am. This product is too pigmented and I found that whenever I blended it out on my skin, it was super, super patchy. And I think it's patchy because so much product comes off that it just kind of goes everywhere on your cheek. It's not this soft, light flush of color, if that makes sense. Let me show you more. So by the way, this one is in the shade 05 Fearless Coral. I think it's a really pretty shade. They have a bunch of different shades. And just swatching it a little bit, like that's insane, okay? And then whenever I would use it with a brush, because so much comes off, I noticed it just not blending out evenly and getting patchy across my cheek. So I don't love these. And it's so strange to say, also, I do like the little mirror in the back, but I don't love these. And I'm such a big fan of like the infallible world, but these are a total miss. I have seen a couple rocky reviews of these on TikTok. So I'm with the girlies. Like it's just too patchy. At this point, there are so many different blushes out there, especially from the drugstore that are for such a great price, such as e.l.f. and Wet n Wild. I think they should reformulate this and it could be great because I did love the shades they came out in these, but these were a total miss for me. And I was totally bummed out about that, okay? I wanted to love it, but I don't. Let's talk about a product that I really have enjoyed and raved about forever. But there's just like one product with this, one product with this product. There's one problem with this product. And this is, by the way, this is the Refi. This is their brow gel comes out like this, it's white, but once you get to blend it out in your brows, it does turn clear. So you, it, it really doesn't leave too much white residue and then you can pull the cap off and you do get this brush, which I do find that the brush is helpful in you know, pushing the brows upwards for that bushy brow look. Very Gen Z, very what's popular in 2023, as you guys know. So this is like a really popular product on TikTok. It's a really popular product for Refi. And I found a lot of luck with a lot of the Refi products but this one I like for a specific like time point in my life. And for me, I have really stubborn brows. They do not like to sit up. My brows are like, uh, we're not gonna do it, Miss Ma'am. Okay, we're gonna be stubborn and we're not gonna stand up. And it's not that I want them to stand up straight. You know, I just want a little, I want a little lift so they look a little fuller. And this product really does help me achieve that 
when I have laminated brows. If you guys don't know what laminated brows is, it's whenever you get essentially a perm on your brows and it helps your brows just like permanently stand up straight. And it lasts about a month. And after your brow hair, hairs have kind of cycled out, cause you know your hairs fall out and regrowth, the brow lamination goes away. But whenever I have the brow lamination and my brows aren't so stubborn and they kind of do their own thing, this is a really good product for me. And I really love the way it works. And that's why I have it. That's why I've bought it multiple times because it doesn't really leave so much of a shiny residue on your brows. But if you have really stubborn brows like me, like whenever my brows are not laminated and I try to use this product, it works, but I feel like it's just not long lasting enough. A couple hours will go by and I'll look at my brows and they're just kind of clumpy and falling back down with this product. I've heard people say like that they see white residue as they wear it, like it chipping away. I really didn't notice that personally with this product. I have I've heard that. I didn't notice that for me, but I will say it's just not long wear or like strong enough to handle these stubborn brows. Okay, my brows are, they're always on a 10. And this product, unfortunately, it only works when I have my brows laminated, which I do get my brows laminated, maybe like every other month or something like that. So I do go to it and I do use it and I do like it. But if you got those stubborn brow hairs, you might wanna grab something else. This also has mixed reviews on it. This is the got to be I got off Amazon. That's what I have on my brows today. It's really, really good if you have flyaways or if you have stubborn brow hairs and you need a really, really strong brow gel. Got to be in the glued is like a known for brand for making that really tough and strong product. So this is that, but what people don't like about this is that it makes your brows really like hard, like a rock. Kind of like the Got To Be glued spray does your hair. This does that, but it works for me because when my brows aren't laminated, I do need something this strong. So it's kind of tip for tat. Like I have to use these at specific times. I like both of them and I hate both of them, but a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do. But I just wanted to mention this because I don't want you to waste your money if you have really stubborn brows, okay? Let's move on. I'm not trying to be a Refi hater, but I do have one more Refi product that my niece loves so, so much. But for me, eh, what'd you call it? Leave it or take it? Give it or take it? Leave it or take it? Something like that. Take it or leave it. This is their liquid highlighter in the shade Topaz. And let me tell you something. It's a pretty liquid highlighter, but I will say it is thick like molasses. Like this is a very, it feels like Vaseline. It has a Vaseline feel to it. You will be glowing nonstop. And I think a product like this would be really good if you're doing that like light skin tint, no powder, no 2016 thick, heavy, full coverage makeup because it's such a thick highlighter. It will break apart your foundation and it is a bit goopy. But let's say you're doing like a really light skin tint, you're going to the pool, you wanna look dewy, you're gonna be sweating. This is a good product for that because it does adhere to the skin really well and it would even be pretty like on the chest, you know what I mean? So it's like time and place for this one. But like if you're a full coverage glam girly and you glop this on top of your look, it could break it apart. I've experienced it breaking apart my makeup just because it's so oopy goopy. It's a very thick highlighter. Another good thing about that is though, it lasts for a long time. You only have to use a little bit. So this will last you like an eternity. And the shade Topaz is really pretty. It's called the Gloss Highlighter. So it's a beautiful product. It just depends on how you're using it, when you're using it, and what type of makeup routine you prefer. I don't prefer this when I'm full glam like today, like run for the hills. It's not it, baby. Our next product, it's not specifically the product that I don't like. I think it's a malfunction in the packaging, the manufacturing of it. I love About Face. If you guys didn't know, this is Halsey's brand. It's a very creative brand and they have a lot of cool products. However, these are their cream blushes and they should not, they shouldn't be rattling like that, but I think they had an issue in manufacturing, which happens sometimes. I don't think it's anybody's fault but the manufacturers, and I think it's just something that has to be corrected. Just be careful if you buy these, because all of mine, they're so pretty by the way, but all of them, the glue didn't work, and it didn't, it doesn't say in the package. If it only happened to one of them, I would say maybe I dropped it, or maybe I traveled with it a little too much, but it's all of mine, and I have all the shades they had sent these to me. They're so pretty, but again, they just, the glue and whatever they used to adhere the product to the casing, it didn't work. I think it's just a little issue and I wanted to, you know, tell you guys to be aware. These blushes did get pretty popular at one point in time on TikTok. They are so pretty. 
she's spinning, okay, she's spinning. They are so pretty, it's a beautiful cream blush. They have a bunch of different colors in these, but such a shame they had a little boo-boo with the manufacturing. So that's why these get on the de-influencing list. But look at that, isn't that incredible? And I will say these like blend out so pretty on the skin. And the great thing is if it does fall out of the packaging, you could totally like do some double-sided tape situation and get it glued back in there because they so totally are worth using. This is more just like a warning if you pay for something. You know, you might not want it to fall out of your package. But again, I will say, I think they killed it on the formula. So I have to give the formula of these a 10 out of 10. It's just, you know, stuff happens whenever you're creating products. And unfortunately, a lot of the times, you don't even know until it goes into all the consumer's hands and then all of a sudden you're getting the feedback and you're like, oh no, this is the end. Let's move on. So y'all, this product is wild to me. I don't even know how this product is on the market. I don't even know who to say this product could be for. This is the Physician's Formula Diamond Setter Shake Me. You're supposed to shake it. But the problem with mine is like I shake it. And it even has the little ball in there to help break up the product and get it really good mixed in. Mine never declumpifies in the bottom regardless of how much I shake it. And I think they put like too much of the diamond setter in the setting spray. This is a long lasting setting spray. So this stuff makes my face literally look crazy. First of all, it's like white when it comes out. So I'll have like white speckles all over my makeup. I am not spraying this on my makeup today, girl. Can't be ruining that, but I will show you. We will be doing a demonstration, okay? Let's do it. The mister is fantastic. So you spray it on just to show you the white, okay? And then what happens is once this dries down, it turns my skin to this mermaid white iridescent, almost green, purpley green. It turns me almost purpley green. If you wanna be a mermaid, if you wanna be purpley green, this could be a setting. I want it to dry so you guys can see it. This could be a setting spray for you. But I'm like, this is wild. It says it's a, a lustrous diamond dust creates a light diffusing blur. There's no blur. And leaves a translucent veil of luminosity. I think what their goal was to have like this light veil of like glowy skin, but it'd be like, you know, loomy. I don't know. But um, you're starting to see the ashy white look. And once it dries down, it gets this air, cause that's the diamond part in it. It gets this iridescent light to it, which turns me like purpley green. And you know, I don't wanna be purpley green. So this product was a complete flop for me, I'm gonna say. So I don't know who who's gonna like this, maybe one specific person out there, I don't know. Let me show you. We're gonna wait for this to dry down just so I can give you the vision. Okay, I think we're dried down enough. Can you guys see like the white cast on my hand of this? Now I think if you used a lot less, it would be less gray white, but it still does leave an interesting cast. And for me, girl, whenever I get done spending this much time on my glam, I don't want any funny business going on for my setting spray to mess it up, okay? So I want like a clear setting spray that is infused with product to make it dewy, not so much this white. You can almost see a little bit of the green purple come through. It's not the vibes, okay? So it's just something I don't recommend for you guys. Okay, our next product is interesting because I discovered my not love for this product whenever I was on vacation. I recently did a friends trip with my bestie. We went to Puerto Vallarta, we went to Puta Mita, and we had honestly the best time, but we brought all the sunscreens and all the things. And it's funny, we got the re Refreshing Mist Setting Spray from Supergoop. You are supposed to shake it before you use it, which we did. And what's great about this is like, it's a spray on sunscreen, it has SPF 40 in it, and it's water and sweat resistant. So I was like, yeah, Yes, bring all the super goop things because super goop happens to be one of my favorite sunscreen brands on the market. I spend hundreds of dollars on super goop every single year. I got this little sample of super goop at Coachella at the Rub Ball Festival. They were just like literally handing these out to everyone. I'm like, fabulous. I love a little mini spray sunscreen in my bag, but I never got around to using it. So we brought it on our trip, we used it. We sprayed our face with it. It says it's resetting refreshing mist. So you know, I assumed it was okay for the face. And when I tell you this burned our eyes, girl, we were like, oh my God, eyes watering, burning. And it's interesting because this product has like this mint 
I don't want to say mint flavoring, but it has like this mint scent situation going on in it. And I think that might be, sunscreen can burn your eyes anyways, but I think that could possibly be part of the problem. And I feel like if they took the mintiness out of this, it's like very menthol-y, which was so interesting because most sunscreens are kind of just like no scent situation. I don't know, I guess some do. But anyways, it burned her eyes and I don't recommend it. I feel like if they took the mint part of it out, I feel like this would work. Ooh, way better, but y'all, I don't know. I was a little spooked and gooped and it burned my eyes enough to me not use it again. Now, what's cool is I would use it on the rest of my body because it wouldn't burn those parts because the rest of my body doesn't have eyeballs, but just be careful about using the specific super goop resetting refreshing mist on your face, which if it's a refreshing mist, I kind of think it was supposed to be for your face specifically, but I don't know. I'm still gonna use mine because I love a little sunscreen and um, I'm just gonna use it for the body, the body yaddy yaddy. You know, I'm just gonna neck down this stuff. And I feel like they should just, personal opinion, let's remove the menthol, the mintiness out of it. We don't need it. Okay, this is wild. So this next product, I used it in my last video where I talked about drugstore products and I talked about why I didn't like this color. This is the Wet n Wild Alice in Wonderland. They just came out with this collection and this is their lipstick in the shade Painted Roses. Interesting, it's like this orange color. And I feel like a lot of people didn't understand what I was saying, why I didn't like it, because I tried it on and everybody was like, it looks so pretty on you, like I like it on you. My point was, whenever you wear lipsticks with this color orange, let me just swatch it. Orange pulls yellow. So if you're gonna wear anything with the undertone orange, it is going to pull the color yellow from your teeth. If you have white teeth, it can make your teeth look yellow. And then I got a lot of comments of people saying, no, that would look good on this skin tone, that's good tone. Not what I was saying. I wasn't saying it doesn't look good on my skin tone. What I was saying is it pulls yellow. Whenever you wear cool tones, like a red with a blue undertone cool is going to specifically make your teeth look white because it's gonna pull white. And that's why a lot of people like that blue, cool tone, undertoned red lipstick because it specifically can make your lip teeth look so white. However, when you get into colors like this that are super orange, this one specifically is like that exact orangey color, okay? It will pull yellow from your teeth. That's why I was saying I didn't like it. That's why I was like, no one should ever make this color because honey, it will make those gorgeous pearly white teeth look like butter sticks and it's not the vibe, okay? So it's just something to be aware of whenever you're picking your favorite lipstick shades or like you want a little pop of color, steer clear of orange undertones around the lips because it can make your teeth look yellow. It's not so much to do with skin tone, but more so the tones of the colors next to your teeth, if that makes sense. Okay, our next products like kind of go hand in hand because I have a love-hate relationship. I have a love-hate relationship with most of this stuff, but specifically these two products, I really have a love-hate relationship with y'all. This one is the Kosas Dream Bean. It's the Comfy Smooth Sunscreen SPF 40. It has peptides, it has hyaluronic acid, like so good. You can wear this alone, but it says on here that it's perfect as a makeup base. And I said for who? Y'all know I love my full coverage foundation. Actually, I've been wearing, look at this, it's like empty. I've been wearing this Mario foundation. It's more of a medium coverage, but I do build it up a bit. And once you set it with powder, you're closer to full coverage. And I have found that this product, which I will demonstrate, is such, oh, by the way, I love this little applicator. I don't know why, it's just like very satisfying to me. But I will say like this product, you do wanna shake it by the way, because if you can see it, it um, kind of mix it up. You can give it a little shake before you use it. It's so freaking thick and goopy. Again, it's just, look at that. That is just like wildly thick. Thick, you guys, it's like blah, blah, blah. But it does make for a good product because as a sunscreen, it really adheres to your skin. However, if you're going to the beach, you're going to the pool, go for it. Especially if you're doing that really, again, skin tint light makeup, it's great for under that. But if you're a full coverage girly and you're like getting ready to go out, I put this on whenever I was in Cabo. I put it on under my makeup because obviously I wanted the sun protection while being in Cabo, but I also was taking a lot of content and taking a lot of 
picture, so I was doing like full glam makeup looks like I have on today, and I noticed it really did break apart my foundation, and I got really patchy and broken apart, and this was the culprit of it. I still will use this product. It's kind of like the Refi. It's just not a good product for like full coverage look as a base for that. You might want to find a sunscreen that has a much lighter formula, so it's not going to be that thick, greasy formula that can easily break apart your foundation, especially if you have oily skin. But if you have dry skin, I still wouldn't wear this under full coverage foundation. I would wear this if you're doing an extremely light makeup look. I think it would be great. Or best part is you can totally wear it alone and really get that skin protection with the SPF in it. Okay, we're not done yet. Zorling. So this is the Glossier. Every time I say Glossier, I have a battle in my head. I'm like, is it Glossier or Glossier? I think it's Glossier. <laughs> but there's a part of me that reads that ER on it and I wanna say Glossier so bad. Is it French? I don't know. Anyways, this is our future do. It is a all serum hybrid. It says you apply two pumps all over your face as the last step in your skincare routine and you can add more to the high points of the face for extra glow, kind of using it like a highlighter. Again, this is a fantastic product, but I will say this is the thickest, most molasses, goopy, oopy product. If you're a texture person, you're probably not gonna like it. You're a full coverage girly, you're definitely not gonna like it under your makeup. Looking it up online, it says, oh, look at it running everywhere. It says that it is a one-step shortcut to your skincare routine. It has some heavy hydrators, oils in it. It's supposed to make you look gleamy and brighten for 12 hours. So I think this product is great. I just think it's so thick and goopy. I think if you have oily skin, I would totally avoid it. Avoid it. And for me, I like to wear like serum-y products underneath my foundation so that way I don't stay dried out and I am looking glowy and natural. But this one was just too wet and too thick for me. I actually don't love the texture of it without makeup just because it's a little too heavy for my skin. And I do feel like this could easily break me out with just the oils and just how it feels like I'm putting syrup on my skin, so I didn't love it. I can see a specific person who doesn't mind the texture of things or wants something extra heavy like this, because this is a really popular product, so, you know, there's time and place for it. Just not obsessed with it, so I thought I would throw it in the de-influencing video. Next one is a shocker. Y'all know I love Benefit, you know I'm a big fan, and I'm actually a big fan of Benetton. It's a really cool product, but you know what? I started looking online. I have really dry lips. However, when I drink a ton of water, I have less dry lips, but you know, I always see people putting this all over their cheeks and eyes and lips. There is one trick with this product, because if you have dry lips, this will make your lips look crazy. It's like a liquid tint. I noticed like all the girlies are like, use it, use it, use it. Oh, I kind of want to use it right now, actually. Let's just use it for fun, right? But anyways, this is like a liquid tint. It's a cheek stain. It's a lip stain. But because it's stained, if you have dry lips and you put this on your lip, it will get in all those dry crevices and it will look like dark veining through your dry lips. So again, it's all about time and place with each of these products. But it is a really cool product. It's like pretty cherry and this is on hydrated lips. But if you have like, you know, peeling lips, dry lips, cracks in your lips, this product will get into those cracks and you will have like, instead of having this flush of cherry on your lips, by the way, it dries down. It does not stay shiny like this. You will have um, like dark veining through your lips. <laughs> and you might be looking a little crazy. Just a warning, if you have dry lips, you might wanna put a gloss on top of this and mix it in, but using it alone, it's not the vibes, babe. But my favorite way to use it is putting it on like like this. I need a little more on my top lip. Let's add a little bit more. Let's have some fun today. I wish my lip, my lips especially y'all, look I like a vampire. They get so dry like right here y'all. Like look up in here. That's where they get dry. And I find products like this, this tint, it will like get up in here and there will be like a dark line of the tint and it just doesn't look good. Okay. I see everybody on TikTok like in the ocean everywhere putting this on. I'm like until you have dry lips and then it's a wreck. But let me show you it with a little gloss. We're gonna add sparkle iris on top and see that's really the vibe right there you want to add some gloss I don't know I think just because it's a tint it like seeps into like all those little <laughs> nook and crannies in your lips and it can have you looking crazy but I mean I'm not gonna say I hate it it's a Benetton. You can't hate Benetton. It's just like the way you use it moving on to our last 
final product. This is the Jones Road Beauty. This is what the foundation, and we talked about this on my channel already a little bit. It was a while ago, and this went viral on TikTok for being hated. It was very controversial because Meredith Duxbury, who is quite the size of a product reviewer, she didn't review it the correct way the brand wanted it to be used and it caused a lot of uproar. However, there are a couple of things with this product that I have found over time that I just have to agree with even though I didn't use it in a crazy way. The product is not, like the packaging they put it in is like not correct for the product. Like it needs different packaging. I don't know what that looks like or what that would be, but it also kind of splooges this oil out. The oil is just like everywhere around the rim. It's dripping from the top and it's such a freaking mess. And the crazy thing is I haven't heard much from John Jordan Beauty. Then I, I do love is Bobby Brown. I love Miss Bobby Brown. I think she's fantastic. Oh, dang. Okay. So let me just show you. It's, I can't even show you cause it's going to pour out everywhere. Cause the oil has completely, okay, here we go. See the oil. Okay. This is what it does it literally separates the oil out. So whenever, if you leave it set in for a few days, you're gonna have to completely mix it up and this stuff goes everywhere. So it's like, I get that Meredith used it wrong, but overall I do think this is actually kind of a gimmicky foundation. And I know it is meant for mature skin and I totally get that, but this product is a mess. And like there are several products out there for mature skin that you don't have to go through all of this mess. And now I'm gonna put the lid in and it's gonna go everywhere and start leaking out the sides. But I think overall this foundation just needs a little bit of work. I think it could be a great foundation. It just needs, you know, I forgot to put this in great, but needs different packaging just because the product breaks apart so much. It has so much oil in it that the oil separates from the foundation. So you have to kind of mix it in. So I don't, I don't know. Don't really understand the product that much, but I've got to say, I don't love it, y'all. I don't love it. And I want to know, is anyone out there tried this Jones Road Beauty? And if you did, why do you like it? Like, how did it work for you? Let me know. Okay, now I made this video. It's your time to do your work. Tell me in the comment section, what products did not work for you? And maybe you can help someone out there who might want to purchase and it gives your review, your honest review. And that's what this video is all about. It's about honesty and and how we really feel about some products, okay? And y'all can join the conversation too. So be sure and comment down below. Products that didn't work for you, babes. Okay, we need to know the tea. And um, I need to know the tea and maybe I'll try some of those out and give my review as well. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for being here and watching. I love you guys to death. Be sure and just smash the subscribe button before you leave. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.